Good morning, everybody. Chris at Team Aquascape here. On today's latest episode, we're gonna show you an incredible pond rehab out here on the North Shore of Chicago. Okay, first day update of day four, I believe. That's a, that's a four right there. I am standing down in the deepest part of the pond. We've got the top rocked. So what these guys are doing is they're gonna work on starting to bang out all these edges all along this backside of the bog up until about this point where that bridge comes through. We're gonna leave this liner nice and along that side and on this side, uh, cause there's a four by eight foot bridge coming right through this region here. You can see that the pond is pretty well rocked from this point. We've got to finish out that edge uh, right there, which is all a bunch of small stuff. Um, and again, right over there, these rocks are all the height that we need them to be. So we just have to finish up those edges. We're gonna to continue to work our way going back this way. We've got uh, one more big kind of accent rock that we're gonna put right about there. That's going to be kind of our fish feeding or destination boulder, much like this one. That one that one, just some of the bigger chunks in here. This will be a nice one because she'll be able to walk right off of, we've got Brian up there. He's still here, believe it or not, folks. We didn't run him out of town yet. Come on, go <laughs> We're gonna put another big kind of destination boulder right there so that she can walk up kind of from where Matt and Brian are and sit down and kind of feed her fish. We're making good progress. We do have 100% chance of rain tomorrow, unfortunately. So I don't know if we'll be able to get this thing knocked out in, um, in five calendar days like we were hoping, but we'll see. Finishing up, buttoning up the waterfalls. Working on a bib liner, Aquascape prefers to do it with the underlayment. It's gonna hold a little better than liner, so liner won't shift as much, according to Chris. I'm not the expert on this, but I'm learning <laughs> today. Well, eventually with silt and other debris in the pond, it'll it'll eventually get clogged, and that'll serve as a good, good bib. What he's doing is he is going over the top of these cavities right here that were all gravel. So we're, we set a lot of this rock and, and boulder work on top of beds of gravel. And what that is, is that's a huge infiltration area. So we wanna get that water to travel over the top of these areas of gravel down in here, down in through here. So what we're doing is we seal them up with our waterfall foam here, right? This is expanding foam and you can kind of see it up in the top waterfall there. What that does is that covers the rock and then um, what Brian was saying is he'll go over with the underlayment and just kind of mat it down on top of that foam, getting a nice water, not proof seal, but uh, as water proof as we can get. Uh, again, reminding all you guys out there that waterfall foam is not a waterproofer. It's a tool that we use to occupy all the void space to help direct that water over the top of the rocks instead of down through it. And then what he's doing also, and you can see up here, he did a great job of using this moss from the existing rocks and just kind of filling in some of these little areas where the foam was present just to help disguise that foam. I don't want to see any of that stuff. And eventually this moss will end up overgrowing the rocks and that kind of stuff. It loves that kind of damp, moist area down there underneath the spillstone. So great job, Brian. We have T minus 16 minutes until the rain gets here. So you got our berm covered up. You can see, I mean, dude, we've, the bog's full currently. So that's where this water came from, is just the overflow from that. Uh, we've got this section rocked, we've got lights in. Micho, Eli and Connor, as you saw earlier in the video, we're starting to rock this section. They got that whole section of edges banged out. This will be a neat little area right here as well um, for a plant pocket. That water level is right about here. We'll put a handful of rocks along the edge here, but this will be a great place for a lot of those edge water plants. How'd that go again? Show me. <laughs> Look at that, see? These guys got it. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what makes a good pond builder right there. The hand movement. Yep, be the water. We are starting what will be a very productive day five out here on the project. Yes, I said day five. That's because um, we ran into some weather, you know, the, the day before. So uh, kind of held us up, um, but we are going to finish excavation over here and then just continue to rock our way that way. We've got about 15 feet of pond left to go. We got a ton of edges to do. As you can see right now, we're draining the pond to make it a little bit more manageable for us to work in there and not get our boots all wet um, and cold. That's where we're starting. Micho's running around checking edges, setting water level so that we know exactly how high we need to have all these boulders along the sides as we're going. All right then. Right 
right here, you see the snorkel and centipede is in. Matt and Connor are putting in the 9PL pump that is going to power the bog filter and then the circulation jets down here. Snorkel and then we have the centipede go along there. I do have a small aqua block underneath where Matt is sitting just to help keep the area and the perforation on the centipede open. And then I've got some big and small cobbles over the top of that. And then what I'm going to do, cobbles over this. Over here I might just throw some fabric and then gravel and then I'm gonna rock out in front of that snorkel. So that's what that's looking like. The other mat over here, rinsing everything off. You gotta keep the water in the pond. Gravel is super filthy. As you can see, like I told you earlier in the video multiple times, we're not rocking the whole thing, but at least we have the top shelf. So the guys have been doing a great job kind of following along. They've been using the transit stick, which you see set up over there. That's what's on the tripod. They're using that to show them where water level is. And then we have the stick set to three inches higher than that so that we make sure that all of our edges are good along through here so we're not doing double work. Kind of follow through back up towards the waterfall. Got the main man Micho over here. He's, uh, what are you doing over here, boo? You know, it's starting this little one watt water lights right here. Lighting, up lighting at night makes a whole difference. It makes the water feature stand out at night. It makes it look great with all the little water trickles going all over the rocks. You're putting in these little one watt waterfall lights down in here, right? Yeah. You really like to put them in where, like in some of these cascading falls, like some of the little areas where the water individually is gonna come over, right? Yeah, see this is a main waterfall right here. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna fall down. Oh, go, gotcha. The light's gonna go right here. It's gonna light up the whole veil the of, whole of water, veil right? Water, yeah. Cool. You are highlighting or lighting every little waterfall that's in here. I think you're yeah, gonna so put one over one there. Right here. Good. There's gonna be another one right here, so when the water comes in through here, perfect. It that lights up, area. Nice. and this little rock right here is gonna shine really That'll be nice. Cool. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Gosh, that's that's gonna look awesome. The the lighting kind of gives the pond a whole nother dimension at night, right? Yeah, it's like having a pond at day and having a pond at night. But they're totally different because yeah. one's lit up and it's it's a little bit more magical a little bit. So the attention to detail, right? Like we could easily throw that light in there, but what he's really working hard on is concealing that cable that powers the light and he's gonna run everything out this way because that's where our lighting is. You can see him working the cable back down between these little crevices in between the rocks to basically make it unseen, right? It's that attention to detail. Nice job, man. Thank you. Lights going in. The plumbing is getting wrapped up for the snorkel centipede down at the other end of the pond. And then I'm gonna also get the skimmer installed right there. We wanna put it in proximity to the snorkel centipede so that everything's drawing in the same direction. So the last thing you guys saw was us installing some rock work around the centipede. We've made a little bit of progress since then. So let me just go ahead and flip the camera around and show you where things ended up. Bam, it's netted. We're done. Yeah. So the skimmer, as you remember, we were just getting ready to install. It's sitting right there, the snorkel centipede that is feeding the bog filter is sitting right there. There's the cap, okay? The reason that these two units are together is so that all the water is being pulled in the one direction. So it's all coming from across the pond all the way towards you and everything gets sucked in this one area. We would have a weird dead zone had we put this snorkel centipede maybe back up over there and then the skimmer over here, you get this weird cross current action. It just wouldn't work that way. So we like to put the snorkel and centipede located as closely together as possible. Everything is finished, we're wrapped. It's up to the landscaper now to come in and install the bridge, finish up the landscaping. You can see he's put in a couple of the arborvitaes already. This recent cold snap really kind of threw us for a loop. So we wanted to hurry up and get a net over the top of this pond. As you can see, it's doing its job by collecting all the leaf debris and preventing it from going into the skimmer basket or falling to the bottom of the pond. We also threw in some air stones per the client's request. So you can kind of see a little bit of bubble, bubbly water in a few different spots. Both pumps running, so we've got a 5PL that is feeding this beautiful waterfalls. Lots of stuff happening over here. There are some little beachy type areas that'll be great for aquatic plants. That gravel, this little bit of gravel, that's all inside the liner. So there might be a little bit of water weeping back behind there. So that would be a really nice place for some, maybe some of those edge water plants, as well as down here. 
And as you can see, just along some of the edges, um, there are some of these shallow backwater areas right over here that we can install plants and really kind of naturalize the edges. Again, making it so that we're not quite sure where the water feature stops and the land begins or vice versa. So beautiful waterfall being fed by a 5PL. In this area in through here, is where our bog filter is. You can see the snorkel centipede cap right there. That is being fed by the snorkel centipede down there with a 9PL in it. All the plumbing is inside the liner covered up by rock work and gravel and that kind of stuff. It ends up coming over the little lip that we dug here and shoots into the bottom of the centipede, which runs this way. So that'll really, really help keep the water nice and clear. This area where you see the exposed liner from here and then over there, that's where a big four to five foot wide by about eight to 10 foot across bridge, wooden bridge element is going to be constructed and installed. So that's why we left this liner nice and high because we're not quite sure what the landscaper has in mind, but that's why this area is left unfinished. You can see the rest of it is done. It looks a little weird because it's all just a bunch of dirt and leaves along the outside, but you can see really, really nice contour and shape to the pond itself. The net was properly installed by our maintenance team uh, yesterday and uh, this pond is ready for winter. As you can see, the project is a wrap. I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like what you saw, hit that little thumbs up, give us a like. Feel free to leave us a comment in the, in the comment section below and also hit subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all the content that we're coming out with twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time here in the good old US of A. To all of you overseas, thanks for checking in and we're gonna peace out. This is. <laughs>